for attending today's RDA webinar on the RDA Plenary in Denver. I'm Katrin Beck from the RDA Europe Training Program team. Now let me present you our three speakers. Hilary Hennerho is the Director at Trust IT Services Limited, an international marketing and research organization specialized in fostering information and communication technology solutions across Europe and globally. She is specialized in the definition and execution of digital marketing, communications and outreach strategies on a pan-European and international level. Hilary is the coordinator of the RDA Europe communi communication activities and is a member of the RDA Global Secretariat, where she is responsible for RDA communications and plenary meeting coordination. Dr. Françoise Genova is an astronomer. She was the director of Strasbourg Astronomical Data Center, a pioneer center for the sharing of scientific data from 1995 to 2015. She has been one of the founding parents of the International Virtual Observatory, which defines the astronomical interoperability framework. She has been involved in the RDA and in the RDA Europe projects from the beginning and is currently the co-chair of the RDA Technical Advisory Board. Kisun Pokarel works as a research scientist, bioinformatician at the Natural Resources Institute of Finland, Luke and is a PhD student of genetics at the University of Helsinki. Currently, he is also involved in the Arctic Arc project, which aims to study animals' adaptation to the Arctic as a complex human environmental process. Kisun is one of the eight RDA Europe Early Career Grant winners taking part in the RDA plenary in Denver. So let's start our webinar. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, for uh, coordinating this webinar today and to Francoise and Kisson for their um, preparation and participation and to all of you for giving up your time today to uh, join us to understand what happened in Denver. Um, I hope you can see on the screen uh, the questions so it would help us a lot if you would get, take a moment to answer them if you're a member of the Research Data Alliance, yes or no, and also there's another question coming up about the plenary uh, participation uh, directly. So, uh, as I see that many of you are members, I will uh, be very, very brief in the uh, RDA in a nutshell. I think, of course, the focus of this is not to explain what uh, RDA uh, is, but it, it would help to contextualize it slightly. So just to remind you very briefly, these slides will be available afterwards, so um, I won't obviously go into all the information on this slide, but it's a member-based organization, and we focus on the development of infrastructure and community activities that reduce barriers to data sharing and exchange, and the acceleration of data-driven innovation worldwide. Since we uh, launched in uh, March 2013, which is over three and a half years ago, we now have four, uh, four and a half, almost four and a half thousand members, uh, representing more than 111 countries around the world. All these data practitioners uh, that come together to uh, work with us in, in RDA. So, if uh, so, I will. You would say to me, well, okay. That's the context of it. Why then is an RDA plenary meeting important? And I will try and explain that to you and why you could attend, should attend, uh, if you can, especially if you're European and you have the opportunity to come to our next plenary. Of course, what happened in Denver? I'll give you some insights and then Francoise uh, and Kisan will give you more from their point of view. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about, of course, who was at the meeting and what was on the agenda. And then I'll tell you some uh, where we're going to go next and what are the important dates for your diary. Uh, the reason, of course, for that is, uh, as I say, this is uh, a, an RDA webinar for RDA Global, but it's particularly focused on Europe. In fact, it's at a Europe-friendly time. And as our next plenary is in Europe, we hope that the information that you get today will help you perhaps uh, think about coming to, uh, to um, our next plenary in Barcelona. So. Uh, when I thought about what I wanted to say to you today, I came across this very nice uh, quote uh, from Master Treller, who's the head of X, uh, or formerly which is Google X, and he said, great dreams, they're not just visions, they're visions coupled to strategies to make them real. 
And uh, we have a big vision and a big dream in RDA, and it's uh, that our researchers and innovators openly share data across technologies, across disciplines, and across the countries to address the grand challenges of society. That's our vision, that's our dream, and there's, there's plenty of strategy behind it. Um, and we are actually building these social and technical bridges to, to realize that uh, dream and that vision. But one of the things that we, of course, a part of our strategy and an important part of our strategy are the plenary meetings because they are the physical place where uh, this vision is becoming a reality. So what are these plenary meetings? Well, in very briefly, we have them every six months in a different place around the world. They bring together our, our we have a unique community of data science professionals from multiple disciplines and domains. Um, our plenaries, by the way, are attended by, yes, our members who, have, who we build up like uh, over, over time, but we also have a, a fairly good 20, 25, 30 percent newcomers every single plenary, irrespective of the number of participants. The uh, plenary meetings are very, for us, they are where the work for RDA is done, especially physically. As I said, there's a lot of virtual work that uh, happens in RDA every single day with the working and the interest groups. But it's the one moment we offer in time for our uh, members to come together and really to create these and work on getting these tangible deliverables out that will uh, achieve our vision. And the heart of our plenary meetings are these working and interest group meetings and birds of a feather meetings, which uh, will be explained to you more. We'll give you some examples of what they are, but basically a birds of a feather meeting, which might be of interest to some of you who maybe are not fully involved in a, in a working or an interest group, are an opportunity to propose a new theme, a new topic for discussion in this global arena. And then, of course, also very uh, important to RDA is the uh, presentation of, the, uh, of new outputs and recommendations and showcasing a little bit the adoption uh, and implementation of those recommendations as they go. So why would you attend? Uh, well, they're, they're, of course, to gain knowledge and share discoveries and understand potential solutions. You can also uh, learn about new trends and uh, strategies, directions, and policies. It's a great networking event uh, for it's very much a social net, uh, build, uh, bridge building exercise too, so you can meet new committed, and they are very committed and very passionate because, as we said, it's volunteer and it's uh, based the Research Data Alliance. And you can also contribute to the acceleration of this data infrastructure development, which we all uh, know is really important um, around the world. So. Just before I tell you exactly what we did at the actual plenary, this uh, plenary meeting in Denver ha was slightly different to our previous ones. It took place in uh, International Data Week. International Data Week was um, an event conceived uh, and organized together by ICSU's CoData and the World Data System and RDA. And there were three main parts of the program, so it was a long week. But it was a very productive week, and it started with SciDataCom, which is a scientific research conference, okay, and it we addressed more the areas of data science and data stewardship. Then we had the International Data Forum, which uh, was, a, shall we say, a day dedicated to bridging between the two um, uh, events, so our Research Data Alliance plenary meeting are very much a working, uh, working context, and then some International Data Forum where we were we invited uh, research industry and education to discuss uh, areas that are, of course, uh, close to the heart and challenges for both uh, ICSU and RDA. Our uh, Secretary General would say that uh, International Data Week was the world's largest research data conference, and I think I have to agree with him because, indeed, there are many conferences dealing with data, but this one was particularly focused on areas of research data, data sharing. And overall the week, we had 815 attendees. So in terms of uh, the uh, plenary meeting for the Research Data Alliance itself, we actually had 543 participants. They came from 41 different countries. And you can see, uh, again, the breakdown either in the graph or in the table of the percentage to give you an understanding. So 
Uh, we had about a 50% uh, participation from academia and research. That's slightly lower than normal because we had a higher uh, participation from government. Uh, we had libraries, which increased as well, and enterprise. So uh, overall, we were very, very pleased with the participation. Um, just to put it into context, at the beginning of October, we had just less than 4,500 members. And so as you see, it's over 10% of our members attend these events. It's, that's quite a, a, you know, a, a good number. In fact, we worry about the scale of these if they, they become too much. So 550 is quite a, a, a substantial number. So in terms of uh, the agenda, apart from the breakouts and the working meetings, which as I said are the core and the heart of our agenda, the uh, other elements, shall we say, are the RDA for Newcomers me uh, meeting, which is always uh, very useful, even if you're not a newcomer to RDA, but you get a bit of a guide to what the RDA is, some updates, of course, um, about new uh, aspects, new processes, how to do things, and then, of course, maybe a, a little bit of a map and a guide to the plenary meeting itself. This year's panel, we didn't have very many plenary or panel sessions because we dedicated all of that to the International Data Forum on the day before, but we uh, did have a very interesting sustainability panel on transitioning uh, to sustainability with a focus on the data infrastructure aspects and um, that and the other uh, uh, keynote data sharing in Africa, and of course, all the recommendations and adoption stories, which we'll tell you about in a moment, are available on the program and can um, be, you actually, this is the recording, the webinar recording, so you can hear them on that. Um, the, uh, oh, to put a, a focus, as I said, the adoption, the recommendations and the outputs are, uh, are very important to us and every uh, plenary session that we have, we obviously have a presentation of those that are coming up and those that have uh, finalized, they have uh, their own timeline. So we had five recommendations presented. Um, I think the important thing to tell you is that these are five of, uh, well, 15 we have now at the moment. Uh, uh, that have come out, and so with, uh, and then we had five, just five examples of adoption and implementation cases. But we have 75 cases of adoption across of these 15 different recommendations and flagship recommendations that ORDA has produced to date. And we heard from five of them. Very interesting, in fact, in more in discipline areas. So technical solutions in discipline areas like biomedical science, the forestry, the agriculture. And again, I invite you to uh, check those webinar uh, recordings out or the recordings out because you can hear they were 10 minute presentations, very interesting to understand how these our recommendations are actually being implemented um, in different scenarios. So about the breakouts, we had 73 of them, um, many interest groups as you see, um, many by uh, um, the uh, these graphs don't translate uh, it onto this computer, but uh, 16 joint working groups. We had work uh, and birds of a feather meetings. Um, Francoise will make some, give some examples and some focus on them, so I won't go into the uh, uh, the actual details of those meetings. Um, as you can see from these uh, pictures, which are there, there was it really was a really uh, passionate, enthusiastic. I always get that feeling when I'm at the the the, the, the RDA plenaries. They're such a delight to to attend. You meet so many uh, people. You hear so many new things. There are so many different trends and policies and things being discussed in all the different breakouts. In fact, the problem is always what to choose to go to, and. Um, <coughs> But uh, as you can see from the photos, there are many things. I like to give a personal takeaway, but this, this uh, webinar, I felt it would be nice to give um, a little spotlight to one of our eight early career program uh, winners. We have one at the end of this webinar who's going to could give you his own live insight. But <coughs> excuse me. But I thought that uh, we run this early career program. These are people who are working in research data uh, and, and they're scientists and they're chosen. We give them a travel bursary to come to the plenaries and to work or to, be, to uh, get involved in the groups and listen to the discussions all the time in areas that are, are relative to their studies. And I really liked this quote about uh, from Thomas, who said uh, that he found RDA as a great, it was his first time there, as a 
great mixture of backgrounds and personalities, and that he felt it was the only place where researchers were have, uh, where, who are having a wide range of problems with uh, research data can meet those who are willing to help, or at least point them to existing solutions or to discuss these things together. And I think that really captures uh, what RDA plenaries are all about in a nutshell. So if you missed it, um, uh, and you are now interested in, in attending a next one, well, the 5th to the 7th of April in Barcelona, we have our next uh, plenary meeting, so it's in Europe, and the focus of this one will be Data Infrastructures for Open Science. Um, it is hosted by Barcelona Supercomputing and supported, of course, by the Research Data Alliance in uh, Europe. Uh, I, I give you a couple of little insights, uh, two slides on that, because I think as I have your attention and if you're interested, there are some things that I would like to bring your attention to. We always do a pre-plenary event. There will, of course, be the RDA for Newcomers event, so any of you that are thinking to come along, you might decide to plan your trip already uh, to come the day before. We are organizing um, an event that on the 4th of, of April that will focus on things around a data market, a model for a data market, data transactions, data economy, and we, you will find more information about that. Um, of course, there would be features in the plenary um, on that aspect, but uh, just to, so you can put it in your diary. Um, actually, at the uh, also things that you could actions that you could do if you were interested in Barcelona would be. Uh, at the moment, we have applications open to host a co-located or an associated event on the days leading up to the plenary or the afternoon of it. Um, so what, do they, what is the difference between them? Well, a co-located event would be held in the same venue as the uh, RDA plenary and would appear on the program, and you would uh, so you can apply uh, to, to have that happen. Or an associated event is where basically you feel this event would be of interest to the RDA members, you would like it to appear as a main part of the program, but you um, uh, will look after the organization and do it in a different place. Both of the application forms are available at that link. We can put it in the chat for you later on. Applications are open until the 27th of November, 5 o'clock European, Central European time. And uh, I, anybody thinking of organizing an event around the plenary would be well advised to use that uh, application. Um, if you are a member and you're thinking of either proposing a birds of a feather meeting, so a new meeting, or you want uh, with your working or interest group to uh, propose, apply for a meeting or a joint group, we are uh, opening the applications for on the 15th of November. They usually stay open for about five to six weeks. But you'll get plenty of notification through our newsletters and our Twitter feed and different things. And then for any potential early career program people on the call, uh, the webinar today, the application should open at the end of November. It stays open for five to six weeks again. And this is a travel bursary uh, for your travel and accommodation and expenses to be paid to participate in the plenary and at the same time showcase some of your work through a poster session. Yeah. And then, uh, just to let you know as well, because the, some of some few people like to keep your diaries well up to date. Of course, we don't. We're well organising the ninth plenary, but we're already sure where plenary ten is going to happen. Um, it will be in Montreal, in Canada. Uh, the dates are the 19th to the 21st of September 2015, hosted by the Université de Montréal. We are very delighted that we're going to be celebrating lots of different. Um, birthdays and anniversaries. It will be our 10th plenary meeting. It will be the 150th anniversary of Canada and 375 years of uh, Montreal. So we all have plenty of things to uh, celebrate there in, in Canada. So I'm finished. I thank you. If you have questions, um, I believe Catherine would like to manage the questions towards the end. Thank you very much. These are my contact details. Anything you would like to know, of course, I'm fully available for you to uh, contact me, and I remind you once again about the plenary, mark those dates down, and I hope you will all come to the uh, plenary to, and join us in Barcelona. Thank you. So the second part of this webinar is to have a, a more closer, a closer view somehow of what happened what is happening in VRDA with working groups, interest groups, and the uh, birth of a feather sessions in the
So I, I would like to remind you that RDA is a bottom-up organization and that topics are proposed by the community. Some of them are technological and some of them are much more sociological, so there are plenty of different kinds of activities in the RDA. The work is organized into groups which have a charter and international membership. There are interest groups, working groups, and as explained by Hilary, we have a bird of a feather which are specific to each plenary. So just to remind you that the working groups, they have 18 months, I should say 18 months only to produce outcomes. And these deliverables should facilitate these things are implementable and they should bring the tangible progress. Hilary gave you uh, examples in the list of things which were presented during the plenary. Uh, there are many kinds of possible topics, so there is also a wide variety of products. I will go back to that a bit later. The interest groups are here to communicate and coordinate, and they are also producing things, which can be many different things, again, surveys, recommendations, reports, and so on. And they also propose working group statements. So the BOFs, the birds of a feather, they are really temporary. They are linked to one plenary. And they are here to help people to bring a new theme. If you have something you really would like to discuss in the RDA, because it interests you and it's difficult and so on, and you need to gather different points of view, it's the way to find interested colleagues. And it's often, I will show you that in the end, the starting point for new, for new uh, formal groups. So even for the, a TAB member, or a, a member of a technolo te technical advisory board, it's very difficult to know everything about what happens in the RDA. So I think it's worth reminding the kind of topics and also the list of topics which are dealt with. There are groups which are focusing on domain science. There are some which are more on community needs. Others which are around sharing and referencing data. Others are in partnership with other organizations. And also, many are focused on data stewardship and services. And finally, some of them are really at the technical, technological background of data sharing. So you see this very wide range of activities. Hilary told you the number of sessions. There are many, many of these groups met at the plenary, most of them. And uh, one may think that there are too many topics, of course. But it's clear that diversity is built in in the RDA aims. If you think about what it means to share the scientific data, there, there are, of course, many possible topics. And the point is, since we are really serious about being bottom-up, people bring their own topics. Uh, with the Secretary General Mark Parsons, we published recently a blog, which is called Building Infrastructure Through Strategies of Interconnection and not through architecture, which means we do not have a predefined vision of what the RDA should be, but we try to enable it to facilitate dash dash sharing, building on the interests and work of its members. So, the, <clears throat> the landscape evolution, of course, is fast, and it's followed by the technical advisory board, there are groups which are meeting in the RDA, and they were meeting also in the in Denver around how to use the outputs together in practice. This is the data fabric group, which has lots to do with the technological output. The publishing cluster is going towards the next working group about a framework for scholarly publishing. And we also discussed between the tab and the group chairs uh, the interest of having a group which gathers all the groups which are disciplinary, which deal with, dis with scientific topics, so that they can discuss together and also answer to requests from the other groups, the more technical ones in particular. So we have this regular chair and tap chair meetings at the plenary and the chairs meet between the plenaries. 
And there are also many joint sessions on topic of common interest during the plenaries. So the outputs, one of the new thing is that we understand better and better the different kinds of outputs the RDA is producing. They are the working group recommendations, but there are also many other outputs which are of real widespread interest uh, supporting outputs. And there are also other outputs which are kept on the RDA side. I will go quickly through the list of the current list of recommendations and outputs. These four ones are the very, the ones which were produced at the beginning. They are very technical at the found, technical foundation of data sharing. Then the, the, we can begin to see the diversity of possible outputs. Uh, some still are technical, but others began to be, uh, around disciplinary themes, for instance, the weak data interoperability, which is a very interesting uh, recommendation on how to share with data. And the same, the, the agriculture group is proposing a new group around rice data interoperability and an overarching group, uh, which is above, uh, which is about agri-semantics, how to do semantics in agriculture science. Uh, the data citation group is a very widespread adoption. It's to define uh, mechanisms to cite dynamic data, which is a problem common to many people. And again, there were many online and offline discussions during the plenary. Some people are really implementing it. And I know about uh, a large organization in Europe, the European Southern Observatory, which is using the data citation recommendations as a sanity check of their own way to cite data, although they don't need to go deep in the mechanisms because they don't have this kind of dynamic data to cite. There are also other, other recommendations around uh, repository audit and certification of widespread interest in the repository world, and also all the outputs about how to publish data, the different aspects of data publishing, uh, and then the last ones, one is a prototype of summer school in data science and cloud computing. And the other one is technological and organizational around brokening governance. So this gives an idea of the diversity of the topics, which are the first outputs of the RDA after only three years and a half. Another view on what happened is the new topics which are emerging. So I made a list of the birds of favor sessions. I, I grouped them. I, I will not go in details for that, but there are some which are around topical uh, topics. It's the same order as the, the slide on the different kinds of topics. Uh, some are around research data management. Uh, many are, of, of course, around collaborations. Uh, data publishing, certification, data curation, and domain vocabularies. I have to say I attended uh, one of the domain of the vocabulary uh, meetings, and I was interested because people were starting from an ISO standard, and they found that users were not in the standard. And so it's very interesting to put the the knowledge which is in the RDA with many different kinds of people to try to understand what happens in reality beyond the standard. So just a final point, the fate of the Bird of a Feather sessions in Tokyo, uh, which was the plenary just before Denver, six months before. So this is the list of the Bird of a Feather session. And you see that many of them are being producing uh, interest groups and working group. They were efficient in gathering people to, to, to work together and to propose a charter for a group. So all these charters are either examined or be, or approved. And so people are working on new subjects. Each plenary allows to prepare the future of the RDA by bringing up a new subject. To stay informed, I really encourage you to go in the Who is RDA page. And there is here a set of slides, which is RDA in a nutshell, which is updated every month. 
And I really think it's a useful piece of work to, to know what is going on. I have to admit I stole several of my slides from it, and I consult it very, very, very often. So thank you. And now uh, Kisun will give the next part of the talk. Hi. So um, uh, Hillary and Francois already told about um, what RJ is about and what you can uh, expect. But uh, and in next few minutes, I will talk about um, my experience as a, a first-time attendee in the RJ plenary, and also what kind of opportunities I got uh, being an early career uh, early career fellow. So before I start, uh, I'd like to give some background of my work. Uh, I work with uh, DNA and RNA sequence data, uh, which are usually a big data. Yes, they are generated by uh, next generation sequencing technologies and machines. And um, the type of data that I work, it comes from different animal species, uh, which have, um, in some cases, there were uh, inadequate annotations or inadequate uh, already available information or uh, in some uh, in another species like reindeer th there is no genomic annotations available and mm, when I am mm, in my research um, for instance in case of sheep that I'm looking how for instance can we increase the productivity uh, like reproductive efficiency because uh, that's um, that's necessary for um, from the breeding point of view as well as uh, as a farmer so they, they always want to have more uh, more lambs or more pro products and also with case uh, in case of reindeer uh, I'm focusing on how for instance animals are existing in extreme climates like in, in Siberian region and and also uh, in the areas where there is uh, sub zero temperature almost half of the year in this uh, reindeer project, I, uh, we are working in collaboration with uh, anthropologists. So they are basically doing some um, some collecting data from different uh, communities uh, in these areas, like Siberia or in in Finnish uh, Lapland. So we are trying to collaborate uh, from genomics point of view and then from the social social science point of view. Uh, in my analysis, uh, I I use open source softwares. Uh, for doing the data analysis and uh, heavily depend on uh, public databases to get uh, additional information from uh, related species. And uh, one of the main problems with uh, my work is that I, I'm always struggling to find a right tool, not necessarily the best tool, but uh, which can uh, somehow understand my data and then give uh, more, more reasonable results and also the same with the methods. So there, there are no standard methods, and then there is always issue. And and like and those were the reasons why uh, I was interested to attend uh, RDA plenary and, and also interested in RDA in general. Um, when I attended the plenary, uh, I, I, I got the chance to attend also the International Data Forum, as Hilary already mentioned, it was uh, organized before the RTA plenary, one day before the plenary, and it, it was really very useful uh, to get the concept of different aspects of the data and, and also uh, like what we, we can expect more from the RTA. So the meeting was on like uh, academic conferences, so it was uh, more like panel discussions and there were keynote talks. Uh, and the, uh, the presenters, uh, they represent both academia as well as, as government sector. So you could basically uh, see how uh, the academy and, and government sectors are working together to solve the issues and challenges associated with the data. So basically the topics, they, they, they were uh, included, uh, for example, what kind of opportunities and challenges, open science and open data, uh, data keeps and you know, some of the topics like how the data has acted as a public good. How, for instance, uh, I, I, I recently I looked after um, 
what happened in the Nepal earthquake in 2015 and how data has been doing good in this kind of uh, natural disasters. And it is really nice to see like there have been so much progress recently, like um, big giants such as Facebook and Google, they have their systems to to collect data and then to know like how the status of the people affected by these uh, calamities. But uh, in addition, there are also uh, some open source um, um, open source programs and then the communities who are, who are involved to collect the data so that such data can be used to mobilize, for example, the, the resources and then to know how the situation is going on in different parts of the, of the places. And in addition, we uh, I also got a very good overview on how what are the responsibilities as a data scientist, what kind of things we should consider uh, being uh, when we are dealing with the data, how we can uh, protect uh, the the in privacy of individuals, for instance, but also provide uh, more accurate and and reliable uh, results. And uh, in general, this uh, meeting really justified why we need organizers, organizations like RDA, and and the importance of of RDA in general. Um, even before the RDA plenary started, uh, we had uh, a session RDA for newcomers, which I find really uh, nice, uh, and and I think it is a most attended session for newcomers, and also to those who have already attended, as as Hilary already mentioned, like you, you get to know the more updates, what's going on, and what are the recent uh, recent progresses made, and also. Mm, it, it briefly or nicely introduces RDA as an organization, but also gives a general overview of different working groups uh, or interest groups or even board of feeder, feeders. So after attending this session, you, you really don't feel like you, 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 have, you are really a newcomer or you get lots of information so that the uh, rest of the days uh, in the plenary is going very well. And um, other aspect uh, that I, I really find interesting was that you can clearly know how you can involve in RTA as a community. And um, the other uh, major aspects of the RTA plenary was uh, different aspects, uh, different workshops uh, of interest groups, working groups, and board of feeder meetings. And these meetings, they covered uh, progresses uh, they have achieved so far and also uh, their future plans. And uh, one of the um, good things about uh, this workshop was that uh, they were useful for collaboration or networking. For instance, if you, if you are interested in a, in a working group and, and you can already see how or where you can fit in the working group, whether what is the status, so is it going to be completed um, soon or it has already started, so it gets more information so that you, you know like how you are going to be associated in that working group. And uh, I also noticed that some of the interest groups, um, they, they usually organize pre-meetings before the RDA plenaries. So uh, these kind of pre-meetings can be very useful if, if you are really interested. So you can go and present your ideas and then also discuss where you are going to fit. Uh, personally, uh, as an early career fellow from RDA EU, I supported two interest group workshops, uh, interest group in agricultural data and, and associated work, uh, working groups, and interest group in elixir bridging force and working group on biosharing registry. Uh, I will just provide some links where you can see uh, the notes where, where I prepared for these uh, workshops in next few slides. And um, one of the most, uh, I think, was very useful part of the meeting was uh, early career meeting session, which was organized at the end of the uh, um, plenary. And this early career meeting, um, it was mainly um, the targeted audiences where the current uh, early career fellows as well as our past early career fellows. And in this meeting, um, I and we we had in very interesting projects 
uh, by early career fellows, especially from RDA US, because they have a, a slightly different, um, uh, this kind of, uh, they have slightly different, um, um, what to say, like, um, ways how, how they are, they are involved in different projects, so they have slightly longer term uh, grants they are getting, so, but it was really inspiring, and also uh, we could hear some useful tips and experiences from the early career fellows. So uh, how we can, uh, for, for example, how we can involve in, in different uh, groups and how we can best utilize these plenary meetings. And in addition, we had general discussion on um, RDA plenary aid, and we, we had some suggestions like how we can improve uh, the uh, future RDA plenaries. And like there were some voices we were, were saying maybe we could have a more dedicated uh, session for, for for presenting posters because uh, posters were um, a very important part as early career fellows. We we all presented our posters where we could um, discuss uh, our our research with uh, with others. And one of the most uh, most interesting and important aspect of presenting poster was that you were um, presenting your work to somebody. Uh, else who, who, who does not belong to your research field. So it's really interesting in that sense also um, you get more additional ideas and, and that was really nice. And also we had, uh, we discussed about possibilities of forming early career board of feeder group and hopefully we'll have some ideas in the next plenary in, in Barcelona. And uh, I'd like to now tell more about the RDA RD, RD Early Career Program. So as, um, as Hillary already mentioned, it provides travel and a subsidiary cost to attend RDA plenaries, and especially in, in RDA EU. And, the, and it comes with a number, numerous opportunities. For instance, you can present uh, your work in the form of poster. And you can see the, my poster, for example, with the, uh, in the given link. And you can share your experience via blog. You can, you can just write you know, all your experience, what you learned and what you got, and then share to the other communities. And you can also support activities, uh, for instance, by participating in, in different workshops. It is really nice because you can, um, you can see uh, how the working groups you are interested or interest groups are working and then where you can fit and discuss more about the future collaborations. And in addition to that, um, uh, you can be involved in formal and informal meetings like early career meeting that I uh, mentioned earlier and also the informal meetings. For instance, we had um, informal uh, uh, launch together with the early career fellows from US and, and EU. And even we we could spend some time together after after uh, the RTA plenary, and and the picture in the right um, you can see like uh, some RTA my my friends, and where we spend some time together in, in Denver Botanical Garden. It was really nice time together. Uh, after I came from I came back from attending the plenary, I I was thinking. Um, how I can be more involved because I really want uh, I really want to be involved in RDA. So uh, I think like um, so far when I check the different working groups and interest groups, uh, I find like livestock uh, species are not um, mentioned already there. So I was thinking that it would be a nice uh, nice way to also represent livestock species, different uh, animals, domestic animals in the in the RDA, looking at the, the problems, and then because they are also equally important, like uh, agricultural crops, so they could fall under uh, interest group in agricultural data. And I have I am more commit, uh, committed to open science than before. Um, like, of course, um, uh, I, I will, um, for example, publish my results in open access journals. And uh, as there has already been some progress that we, you have to. Uh, share your data, but also it would be much useful uh, for others and even myself if I could share my data, uh, my codes, and also knowledge sharing wherever possible. And 
like I mentioned in the beginning of my my talk, that there is a problem with the, with the standardization of different tools and methods. So if we could work somehow towards standardization of bioinformatics tools and methods, that would also be very much useful. And then I would be very much interested to to work on that. And, uh, and now, before uh, finishing my talk, I'd like to. Uh, uh, request so somebody if there is somebody who has similar thoughts or some ideas I would be really happy to uh, to discuss more and then hopefully uh, have a uh, some boards of either group or uh, some ways to involve in other groups that would be really nice and that's all thank you so Thank you very much uh, to Hilary, Francois, and Chrisun for their interesting presentations. Do you have any questions? Um, so